Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio Music Production. This is lesson 3.36 and in this lesson we'll take a look at the EQ DJ. Uh, this is really going to be more review than anything else. We've already covered the EQ DJ in really great depth in some of the earlier videos when we talked about DJing inside of Bitwig Studio, but let's just review and open it up and take another quick look at it. So I'm going to get rid of this EQ5, get rid of this EQ2, and uh, we'll just go ahead and get rid of the tool device for right now. Let's pull in the EQ DJ. I'm going to use the drum loop, I think, because it gives us a pretty good amount of frequency content to mess around with. So the EQ DJ is what I would refer to as being semi-parametric, meaning that we have control over volume. So we can boost the lows, we can cut the lows, same for the mids, same for the highs. And then we also have some control over our frequencies. So we have that split frequency control, which is going to uh, pretty much determine the mid band. So right now the mid band would be going from approximately 420 Hertz to 2.7 kilohertz. What we don't have control over is the Q, which is also known as the resonance or the bandwidth. I like to refer to it as the Q or the bandwidth because resonance is a term that we typically associate um, when we're talking about our filters and if we make that boost, that's what we typically call resonance, but resonance can also mean the same thing as Q or bandwidth on one of those EQ2 devices or EQ5 devices. But with the EQ DJ, we don't have access to that. But real quick, let's just set this up and let's try to just get the low frequency range, which is gonna go from 20 to 420, uh, down to just controlling the kick. So I'm gonna mute our other two bands. And sometimes I have some issues with the EQ DJ. Hopefully today we don't. And let's just try to get the kick. I'm gonna turn up my headphones here. That already just sounds like the kick. Okay, so there's some snare. So in this case, we can go up to basically 900 hertz and all we're hearing is the kick and we'll get a little bit of bleed from that cymbal when it crashes at the end of the phrase. So now I can turn on our other bands. Maybe for the high band, we only want to try to get the hi-hat. So let's see if we can get that. Cool, so we can put them all back in. And obviously then if we just want to cut out the kick drum and bring it back in, we could boost again, maybe a tool at the front would be helpful. Really, I'd probably, in this case, emphasize the mids. Highs a little bit too. And you can see what's happening with our span device as well. So specifically, when we mute everything out, you can see just the low frequencies that are being affected. Now we have the low and high, and we have the gap in the mid, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't have to go into detail about when you would use the EQ DJ. Um, it, but just keep in mind, it doesn't only have to be used in a DJ type situation. In a traditional composition and an arrangement, you could use this EQ DJ to do a whole lot of interesting moves and really create kind of unique filters in the context of the EQ DJ and messing around with these crossover frequencies. There's a whole lot you can do with the EQ DJ. So don't just keep your hands tied to using it in live performance because it can be used in a whole host of different situations. Thank you for watching and you will hear from me again in the next lesson.